Larry, I see you got the little silver tone out. Have you been working on anything on that lately? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Uh, uh, I like this old thing. It ain't worth nothing. It's got a great but, sound. <laughs> you know, it's it has a sound like of an era, an earlier era. And... You know, you can't, or I never have been able to find it in a, like a Martin or a Gibson. It's just not there. It's a different sound, and it's a good sound, but is it the right sound, you know, for some of the things that I play? It's a question that always came up in my mind. And, uh, you know, something else that, I guess as a side benefit to playing one of these old things is you really get your fingers in shape because this has got a very hard, stiff action. <laughs> so if you really want to get you know in touch with what's going on and develop your muscles and your fingers, and I don't think there's nothing better than just an old guitar with a real heavy or stiff action because you know it's like uh, it's one thing to play a Gretsch or something you know a very good guitar and but if you really want to measure yourself see if you can pick up a just an old box you know an old stick of a guitar and see if you can make the same sound on the old junker guitar that you can make on a fancy high price guitar. Now that's kind of a, well, kind of what I look at, you know, because, um, you know, just my search for the sound, I guess, is, taking me there and what I mean by that is uh, you know if you look back over Chet Atkins's career it didn't matter what kind of guitar he played he sounded like Chet Atkins on every guitar he ever picked up you know whether it's an old clunker junker or a you know a d'angelico or a gretch or whatever you care to name he always had that same sound you know and uh so i guess this has kind of been one of those things that one of those little detours that i've taken in the search for that you know what goes into that or what makes the person play that way, you know, and have a consistent sound from one guitar to the other. Mm. Um, I haven't done it yet. <laughs> yeah. I haven't heard a few people that have done it, but Chet was one of them that, you know, that did. So I've always been chasing that little theory, you know, trying to, to, uh, find an answer to that and it all comes down I think to the hands you know I think Paul Yandel even said that once upon a time and uh, one way to get you know strong hands is to play a box that has a really hard action you know and, and you know with something else about hard actions or high actions it seems to me like you get a lot clearer and cleaner sound the notes are a lot cleaner now I know that could probably vary from instrument to instrument depending on how it's set up and what it's made out of but it seems like consistently if you have a well an arch top especially if you run that bridge up instead of down 
you know, trying to make it easy for this hand. But if you run the action up, you get a lot better sound, I think, out of an arch top. You get that nice, punchy, uh, clean sound. That's my two cent take on it anyway. Mm -hmm. What I've been doing lately on mm -hmm. the tunes is, you know, I started working on an old jazz era song several months ago called Mississippi Mud. Now that's not the later one, you know, with Hank Williams the third and all them rockabillies playing. But the old, old one from 1928, the original Mississippi Mud, um, you know, that was with Dick Spiderbeck and Paul Lottman Orchestra and uh, <clears throat> Bing Crosby, Harry Barris, those guys, that version. And I worked up a fairly decent arrangement in C. And I played it for a while, and uh, here last week I came up with a, I think a better one in E for that tune. And there's in C you have some spots that I never have been able to navigate all that good in that song. And it seems like it gets a little bit easier when you play it in E. Or you start in E. You play it in A, I should say. Thank you. 
and C, you know, you're pitched up a little higher. strings and a lot farther to go you see <laughs> So moving it down, you know, when starting in E, playing in A, you can take advantage of some of those open strings and not have to be so busy, hmm. you know, with your your left hand. maybe three variations on the E. Uh, that's like uh, mint julep or maybe Doc Watson. Yeah. 